Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are the 20th of September 2022. So today, on this virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemur, who just arrived, Mark Waite, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Verharten, and Kevin Martins. Six people, I'm so happy. <laughs> Uh, for, first, many thanks, Hervé, for taking care of generating these notes and taking care of that logistic and improving that from one meeting to the other. That's really free and really useful. Um, I still need to publish the previous recording. Let's get started with announcement. First of all, this uh, the new weekly has been re-published. Uh, Checklist almost done. Thanks, Mark. The image should be available in a few minutes. I've manually started the trusted CI job. Um, yep, thanks, Mark. So sorry, I've made a bit of noise on the IRC channel because I saw in the build log some uh, test errors messages. I thought it was stopping the release, but it's not. It has been released correctly. But that means we have tests. Not sure if it's flaky test or real issue. Uh, but yeah, better to mention it. Uh, we'll see if InfraCI is down for the next days. <laughs> um, do you have other elements related to today's weekly? No, the, the thanks very much for checking. I'm glad you checked because it's that that probably should have failed the build. Uh, I think it's a surefire bug. I think it's a Maven bug that it didn't fail the build. And I think the Maven bug is an interesting corner case that needs more exploration. <laughs> Thanks, Mark, for the explanation then. So we'll see. Um, second announcement, DevOps World next week, which mean next week, we, uh, will cancel, it has been removed from the calendar, but next week team meeting is canceled. So don't expect a, a meeting. Uh, next week meeting canceled. Um, Mark, do we have a weekly next week? Yes, we. I think we should. The machinery will run and we'll watch it. So I, I, I would not want to spend the effort and the energy to cancel it. It's just too much work. Yep, makes sense. Thanks a lot. Uh, next LTS, 5 October 2022. Mark your calendar. Uh, some of us will be jet lagged. <laughs> so don't forget uh, that will be the Wednesday. So we, we have two weekly before the next LTS, if it helps your mind. Um, yeah. We keep having, uh, Stefan, are you still okay to keep the challenge of uh, you taking care at least of the Docker images? When we have yes. a new weekly, you have yes, to merge yeah, them and ensure it's deployed. That will be the case for the Kubernetes part of the next LTS in two weeks as well. And so the rest of the team will take care of the puppet part. Does it sound good? So we split the effort and the burden. Is that okay for you? Perfect for me. Cool. Just asking because it might be a boring task, so I don't mind taking it no, or having someone else. Fine. Cool, thanks, Stefan. Security release. Um, so last news is that tomorrow's security release was canceled. I heard it was removed. I'm not sure if it's, uh, hmm? is, is it still kept? I so haven't Dan followed the email. Daniel sent a public email sent an email to the public security advisories list saying that there will be a plugin security oh, cool. update tomorrow that the plugin security release affects that the plugins affected by the security release are less than installed in less than one percent of jenkins installations in the world okay. so it's a relatively low impact one I, I did want to spend a minute on this when we made a mistake two weeks ago um, mm -hmm. When we mentioned that today there uh, that tomorrow there would be a security advisory, um, we knew that two weeks ago. But we're not supposed to disclose that to the world until the Jenkins security team says it. So just a reminder to all of us: 
as we assemble the agendas, sometimes we have information that we have to filter before we put it into the agenda. Sorry. Oh, no, that's, that, you know, it was, it's no big deal. It's just a reminder to all of us that, oh yeah, that's right. Security advice, security communications come from the security team, including the dates of things. Now, the, the, the date of something is actually a relatively low risk piece of information, but in a conversation with them, Daniel noted that sometimes um, it can be disruptive if people expect a security advisor and then it doesn't happen. Fair. Um, in terms of actionable, to be sure that we don't only rely on ourselves, because I don't trust myself <laughs> on that kind of area. Um, what, um, do you remember? Because I'm, I think I'm not uh, on the, I'm not reading the mailing list, the advisory mailing list. Could you share? in the, the link to that advisory link. If it's public, we have a mailing list that we can all check. So that will be the source of truth for our next meeting. And we don't have to worry about filtering ourselves or not. So that's, hey. that's a good point. I'll put it into the, I'll put the link to the advisories, the advisories page and the mailing list into the, into the notes here. Good, good suggestion. I'll do that. For upcoming security releases. Let's use the public email as source of truth. Sounds good for everyone. Thanks, Mark, yeah. for that. Uh, that I and, and even if you're not subscribed to the, the list, it's a Google group, and therefore it's visible by, by just opening a web page. So I'll put that into the notes. Cool. OK. Um, yep. I think that's all for the upcoming calendar. So just to note, since we are canceling next week, the upcoming milestone will span for uh, across two weeks and not only one week. However, I challenge you in terms of project management to only keep that milestone as if it was spanning only one week because most of the team will be traveling disrupting the amount of time we can spend on running tasks. And I don't want to overload the poor Stefan next week who is not going to the DevOps world because he will have to handle the infrastructure alone. So please folks, let's consider this two week span as if it was only one. Thank you. Okay. So if it's okay for you, I propose that we get started on what has been done. So welcome, Kevin. I'm taking the, the issues as they are on the notes there. The, the sorting might be different on what you see on my right screen. So I'm taking on the left. So welcome, Kevin, to the copy editor GitHub organization group. <laughs> Thanks for merging your first pull request on the Jenkins.io website. Thanks, Mark, for monitoring him. And thanks, uh, Hervé, for validating uh, these permissions. And thank you to everyone for helping me get to this point. I appreciate everything I've had up to then. And uh, yeah, it's nice to be part of the team. Cool. Happy to have you. Um, next point was uh, requesting access to Jenkins Project VPN. So we have now David Nosman. No I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing correctly. Please correct me so I can make an effort. David Nos Nosbom or Nosman. I need to the, ask him. The, the first the first one, Nussbaum. The, Nussbaum. B is, the B is sounded. Cool, okay. So Nussbaum, uh, welcome. So uh, he's working on the security team and now has full access to the CERT.ci Jenkins controller used by security team. Uh, that was a good opportunity to clean up the update CLI process and update dependencies for our Docker VPN system. But the documentation that Stefan and Hervé contributed to improve in the past month is, is working very well because it's the seventh person that has access without any issue. Next one, um, CI Jenkins IO container agent are missing SSH agent with the new all-in-one. And also the second one, new agent erroneously running as root. So let me put this two bug as a victory because thanks to first the work of Stefan, then Hervé, and then again Stefan, we now have for Linux, literally the same environment on every agent 
on CI Jenkins IO, whether they are virtual machines or container, which means we build the same thing, we have the same tool with the same version on the same location. That's the same definition. Obviously, that sounds like magic, and we had some some hiccups, uh, let's say uh, some uh, uh, bootstrap initially. There were some unknown issues because of the fact we are dealing with containers that don't have exactly the same package sets as virtual machines. So we focused on our usual tool, GDK, Maven, that works very well, has been tested, so you did great work. But we were bitten by the fact that, for instance, the default Ubuntu image in the context of Kubernetes might not have the same char sets by default than the previous images or the virtual machines, resulting on some weird character Unicode encoding, <laughs> or resulting on the default user of the container being root for some times. No, that was just minor hiccups, except it was frustrating for the developers. So sorry for the inconvenience, but no security issue, no uh, no outage. Uh, and now we have that all in one. So next step will be Windows. And thanks a lot, Stefan, for helping a lot on fixing these issues, because that was a lot of unknown there. And thanks, Basil, of course, for your celerity in mentioning and reporting the issues and confirming it was fixed on your side as well. Nice teamwork, folks. I'm really happy for, for that outcome. You also uh, proposed to add test uh, to ATH, to test local on? Absolutely. I think there is, there is a new issue, but good point. The proposal that uh, Stefan is currently working on is to improve the, <clears throat> we have a job on CI Jenkins IO that Mark initially created, I think, or Tyler or both, that run regularly an ILS check, an acceptance ILS check. It tried to spawn some different agents based on the labels that we provide to the developers. So the goal is to improve what is tested, not only the ability to spawn these agents, but also some, let's say, context of these agents. Is the default user still Jenkins, for instance, could be one, that Jenkins cannot run a sudo command, that, and there is a, a span of element that we want to be tested that could be tested easily in, in that job. So that will be the outcome. The three elements that has beaten us on the, deplo the deployment of all-in-one container, we need to check that now the ILS check mentioned them. So next time the ILS check will be tested and our future ourselves won't be beaten by these issues. Thanks a lot, Hervé. That's a good uh, improvement and way to improve ourselves instead of staying on the uh, on the issue. Do you have a uh, question on the all-in-one? Nope. Next subject: cannot check out Jenkins core Git repository on new Linux container agent. My bad. That's the third issue. <laughs> so fixed as well. Same topic. Add user to Keeper Secret Manager plugin developer team. So I think Tim Yacomb uh, took care of that. That was, a, let's say, usual uh, repository permission for contributor of plugins. Not really in pro. Thanks, Tim, for that. Did I forget some task that we definitively closed? Nope. OK, let's go on the work in progress. So for each of these issues, we give a status and we challenge if we keep them on the upcoming milestone or if we put them on the backlog. Realign repo Jenkins CI org mission. Um, that one, we will discuss that on the contributor summit. The status is I've started the draft GEP, Jenkins Enhancement Proposal, Enhancement Proposal. The goal is to define uh, the strategy we want to adopt in order to bring the bandwidth usage of uh, repo Jenkins CI under 10 terabytes. So GFrog continue to sponsor us. So the project uh, is kept sustainable. Uh, the next step is uh, today, I have to send an email to the developer mailing list to point this element and this issue and start the discussion. The peak of the discussion should happen during the contributor summit in Orlando next week. The goal is to un compare the pro and con solution, uh, gather the opinions 
of every major contributor involved on that, especially the one with legacy knowledge. And then we will have to take a decision. So again, uh, the main, the, the core of this is writing down what do we use that repository for? That's the main outcome of that issue. So of course it's our top priority and it's, uh, it, uh, it has to be kept for the next milestone. Do you have any question on that specific issue? Next one, update LTS issue filter search query. Uh, so that one has been raised by Alex. I don't see any actionable here for the Jenkins Infra team. There is no action on our side as far as I understand. Am I correct, Mark? Okay, so the topic was, I've got to read a little more carefully. This one was, oh yes, nothing for the Infra team. This is this is really a, a release lead improvement. Perfect. We are now of uh, milestone for that. Oh, we do. Okay. Yep. So can I let you just explain, uh, Hervé, while I show no, this? Because that, uh, that's your work. If instead of letting issue where we can't really act on them uh, without any milestones, so without any tracking of any sort, I've created a new milestone to indicate uh, it's an issue we contact on directly. So anyone can see the issue has been taken in account, but yeah. Exactly, that's the goal, to differentiate from issues that are rotting on the issues list that are still in triaging state or on dead states. As soon as they are there, we can um, scan this regularly and ping or close the issues or ask people to act on this. So that's a way for us to limit the amount of routing issue. You should okay. click on it, you, we can see the description. I'm not sure it's complete, but. That is, so that sounds great to me. So is, is it also your intent that when something comes in that is spam to the help desk, we mark it, we assign it to this and mark it as mm. not, not not planned, well, or do we just mark if, it as not planned? We don't have to assign yeah. it to this. If it's a spam issue, I think we don't have any, uh, to put it in any milestone, just uh, close yeah. that not planned. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Hervé, for that. So if it's okay, if it meets, I'm moving the current milestone to the not directly actionable, because as you confirm, Mark, it's a release lead discussion. So important to have it on help desk, it's a centralized place, but no actionable for us, no action from the team. Looks good. Okay. Uh, next topic, mirror stat reports wrong results. So that one is still as triage. Uh, I've added it to the current milestone. So the, um, I'm not sure this is still a legit issue in the sense that the mirror stats shows the mirror stats. I'm asking the question loudly because uh, the file mentioned by Alex is served by multiple repositories. So there is no issues in, for the mirroring service. What Alex is mentioning is that when you look at the mirror stat, we see that we have some mirrors that haven't been updated. The thing is that these mirrors were used, so they are on the history. So I'm not sure of the actionable. Should we spend some time scrapping the current configuration and see if these mirrors haven't been updated, we can remove them or disable them? I'm not really sure. My knowledge of the mirroring system is not good enough there. But at yeah. first sight, I don't see that as an issue, right? Well, it, it, and it's, for me, it's there's an improvement to be had here that mm -hmm. serverion.com is online again. It had problems, but we have not brought it online yet as, a, as an official mirror. So they are, oh. they, are, they are mirroring our content and aliun.com is another mirror oh. that is online, but we're not using them to offload, offload, offload bandwidth demands. And so both of those would benefit. And I believe we have one in Singapore as well. But for me, I think those are all part of a, when, it, when we get to it, improve the mirroring by adding that Singapore mirror, adding back the Cerverion mirror 
and adding the Aliun mirror. And, and they're all part of the same story. This, this is, to your point, Damien, correctly mm -hmm. showing the status that Cerverion is not acting as a Jenkins mirror right now from get.jenkins.io. It will not offer files from Cerverion, no matter how close you are geographically to them. Uh, fair, but the fact that they appear here means they have been added in the database of our own service. I'm, I don't remember exactly if the number here is is it a mirror reporting to get Jenkins? It's okay. Is it the our system that should add it? Is it because they are disabled? Right. Okay. I th I think the reason they shade they show a, a a zero value on the since is is that they're not in the in the list of current mirrors. But yes, they have existed there sometimes, so there is data for them. Okay. So then we have an actionable on that issue. Is that mm -hmm. we have to check those four the status of the mirrors are they enabled or not and check on each one if they are up to date or not or enable it otherwise does it looks correct yes that, that seems correct to me jenkins infra team need to check the status of the four following mirrors okay um do you think it's a topic that we should keep on the upcoming milestone? For me, no, I don't think it's that high priority. I think we've got other okay. things that are much more, much higher priority. Mirror mirror maintenance is is low, far down on my list anyway. Fair. We have multiple mirror already working well. So I propose that we move, we remove milestone of that issue. Sounds good for you? So I'm removing the triage because no need for triage now, and I'm clearing milestone. Mm -hmm. yes. Next one is uh, introduce an artifact caching proxy for CI Jenkins IO. So that's also top priority subject. It's the work that Hervé is doing on having caching system for uh, to to decrease the the amount of thing we download from uh, Gfrog. Eric, can you give us a quick status? Yes, so um, I have uh, an artifact caching proxy running on Azure on the, the Prod Public KUTS uh, cluster. Um, I've created a new digital ASEAN cluster to host uh, the proxy on it, to, so it's separated from the cluster dedicated to ci.jenkins.io agent as a security precaution since uh, we can't uh, be sure uh, our agent uh, can do malicious uh, thing and i'm uh, currently uh, looking at uh, creating a public aks cluster on aws to host uh, c proxy on it uh, same use case uh, uh, have a dedicated uh, public cluster when uh, this AWS uh, new cluster will be up and running, I will uh, create a request on uh, uh, a dozen uh, plugins Mark uh, gave me, where we will be able to test uh, the proxy before uh, as um, the functionality is uh, behind uh, an opt-in parameter of the build plugin shared pipeline library function. Uh, when the test uh, will be executed and if it's successful, we will uh, put this parameter as opt-out. So every plugin uh, would uh, use a proxy if available. Nice. Are there any questions there? Cool. So some elements that might uh, be outcomes of the current discussion of the contributor summit uh, for that specific topic. The first one is that we might decide to mirror everything and not only repo Jenkins .org. I think that seems already a sane element to do. What do you think? Since repo Jenkins CI today is mirroring most of the usual Maven external repository, so that will be a centralized point for us because it still downloads that we will do from repo. 
Yeah, I think that makes sense to me. The anything we, it, I don't see how we would confidently distinguish between them. I think it's a lot simpler to just say, yes, let's mirror anything we ask for that we would have requested from repo.jenkinsci.org. And given how much it's mirroring, I think that's large chunks of the internet. Does it make, is it okay? Does it make sense for you, Hervé? Yes. <clears throat> I probably have to uh, increase the volume size. For now, I'm using uh, 50 gigabyte volume. Okay, well, yep, let's, let's check this. Increase size, volume size. Uh, yep. I don't know how much we will need. We will have to, to check it and that, yep. that should uh, eat us some kind of growing linear limit. Um, authentication, uh, is it authenticated? I don't remember. Uh, this is a uh, proxy uh, need a uh, require uh, notification. Yeah. Requiring client side authentication. Uh, okay, so in the case if we need to authenticate or to enable authentication on repo Jenkins, so the upstream, we might have to create technical accounts on the LDAP and add these credentials directly inside the Nginx configuration. So Nginx would authenticate with LDAP credentials. Yes. Any other question on that topic? Okay, we can move to the next one. So I've moved. So, sorry, sorry, Damien, I was yep. a little slow. Um, on my Maven cache, long time since it's been cleaned, I'm only at 33 gigabytes. So Hervé, if that helps you, and on another system, I'm only at 22 gigabytes, and there are two systems that I use quite actively. So mm -hmm. in terms of total disk space used by that cache, I'll be surprised if we hit a terabyte. Yeah, I, I was thinking about the same. It's, yeah. uh, it's, what, it's the number you've quoted uh, recently, Damien, if I'm correct. Um, yep. Worst case is <laughs> the wall <Walshy> frog stores <laughs> three point five terabytes. So we right. know the the upper limit. We cannot go more than three point five. Not much. No, yep. ten terabytes uh, per month uh, shouldn't be. Side. Sorry, no, no, I see. Yeah, the the distinction there is data storage. The three terabytes that Damien's referencing is data storage that we use on on JFrog. <laughs> Which, so which that, is not much. Right, three terabytes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but we have three cloud providers, so free proxy and free volume of three yep. terabytes yep. if we go this route. Yeah, I... Still cheap. <laughs> Cheaper than bandwidth. <laughs> okay, can I move to the next topic or do you have other questions or... Publish acceptance test harness Docker image on release. So that one is almost done. So I'm gonna move it to the next milestone. Everything, I'm only waiting for confirmation from the developer that once they will create a new release, everything will work end to end. Uh, we have validated two images already. Um, and we had to contribute to the CD plugin process uh, because we had to annotate tags. Because right now, uh, until that change, when you were releasing a plugin, it was publishing the GitHub release, which was creating a tag, but the tag was associated to the date of the commit it was pointed to, which means it was on the day when you published the release and creating publicly the new release. It was the day of the commit when the commit was merged. Consequence is if Jenkins or any tool looks at the date time, it was older than expected by switching to an annotated tag with the, so with the git command, it's adding only adding the dash a. It's a bit different in our case with GitHub Actions, but we were able to make it. The goal is to add some content that will change the tag that will prove the owner of the tag signed the release and will add a new date timestamp when the release is done. Looks to be working, but 
I will only close that issue uh, once it's confirmed. Any question on that? I haven't checked the last message, but yeah. No, yeah, we're waiting for the new release. Next topic, finish cleanup of mirror brain. I'm working hard on this one. Uh, that's quite a sensitive topic. Where is it? Up. Um, I still have some work to do on this one. Um, context, the PKG big machine that hosts update center, but also plugins and updates and some former mirrors uh, artifact. Mirror brain user is also used by every element that we use for releasing, releasing plugins, releasing core, releasing sub project, and synchronizing everything. So I'm right now working on creating a technical user dedicated for that, which role will be then to be the main user owning all the, the doc routes with all the plugins and everything. Then Apache will be changed will be read only only on that because it's not the case for some parts and there are some permission uh, issues right now. And finally, that user will aim uh, own all the scripts that run regularly with the cron tab that used to be the mirror brain user and it has to change name and change permission. So that will be a step by step process because the risk is breaking almost every release things that we have. <laughs> so let's not go too fast on this one. Uh, right now I'm testing it locally and I will try a green blue deployment. First, new user will switch as much as possible and we correct issue when they occur. And then we can start removing mirror brain user and fix the issue that we'll create still. <laughs> um, context, uh, a bit more context. That machine hasn't been automatically managed or documented during the past four or five years. So it's only the collective memory that helps us remember what is on the machine. That's why it's a sensitive topic, but that's for the best. Next topic, uh, we have, we have, we have uh, missing data dog metrics for AKS cluster. Um, we don't understand that one. It's not major, so I will clear milestone unless someone wants to work on this one because we have a good set of metrics uh, on both Grafana and Datadog. So no blockers there, it's really minor inconvenience. Hosting plugin L scoring application on Infra. Uh, Hervé, can I let you give a status on what you did, what has to be done? Um, I've uh, integrated the job in Afra, that's CI, the Jenkins. So it's running on both CI and Afra. On CI, so anyone can see build results and on Afra, so the Jenkins CI Afra uh, image can be published. Um, you and uh, Adrien have, have finished uh, Elm chart, I think, or at least the first yep. session. So now we have to create a PostgreSQL. Uh, SQL database in Azure uh, with the Terraform repository and uh, deploy the mchart uh, configured for, to use this database on prod public okay, ADS. Okay. Um, Adrien is currently in holidays. Um, I don't remember who's taking care of that, but the idea is to see if we can work on this before uh, taking the plane this weekend, uh, because that will be nice at the DevOps world to show a first initial yeah. version of the application. They have an issue in the Docker file uh, uh, earlier, isn't uh, okay. We can discuss this later, but yeah, we can yep. help them okay. uh, get a first session running. And and if if there's an issue, it's perfectly okay if it isn't running. Don't yep. don't be shy. This is this is not that hot a priority as far as I can tell. Yeah, it would be nice to have, but it's only nice to have. May I ask you, Stefan, to take the lead on the database part of this one? Or do you feel to take take the lead? So the goal will be to add the new database and the new user like we did for updates and uh, usage. It's Terraform managed. So then Hervé could 
and I could take over on the Elm chart installation. Okay. So the three of us could interact there. Any other candidate? Oh, no. Thanks, Hervé, on the summary. <laughs> yeah, Bruno, yeah, <laughs> doesn't seem motivated. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what do we have next? Uh, publish pipeline step docs generator and backend extension indexer. Um, I feel like I will want to start uh, rocking on this one tomorrow, but uh, too, not too much. So um, I propose we clear the milestone for this one. Uh, the thing is uh, that one is required to build the Chinese Jenkins IU website, which hasn't been updated since beginning of the month. That's why it's slightly important. Um, if it's okay for you, I'm adding it to the two weeks milestone. I will try my best. Uh, might be a pure asynchronous work. It's a minor one, so that should be okay. If I see it's jump from minor to major, then I will remove it from milestone. Sounds good for you? That won't be my top priority. Won't containerize Java 17 Windows agents. So that one will be in pause. Um, now we have the all-in-one, great jobs, that we mentioned earlier. So the next step for this one is being able to build Windows container with Packer. So there is a currently work in progress pull request. Anyone who want to try uh, can. It's PowerShell low level things. Uh, it's just calling the correct PowerShell version on the container, but almost there. So I'm gonna remove the milestone for this one. Um, and move it in Nefra team sync next because it will be important, but after the DevOps world. Update CLI use separated pipelines organization scanning for all update CLI processes. Uh, where is it? There, top. So thanks, survey for that work. We have an initial implementation that looks really good, right, for Kubernetes management. Yes, but uh, for now it's uh, on a per repo basis. Uh, we have to uh, update the, uh, our uh, custom uh, job DSL chart to take in account uh, uh, the kind uh, folder uh, jobs. Uh, so we could uh, de define them as code. So I think we have an issue. Uh... Yeah, GH organization scanning with an Elm chart. So that's the Elm chart that transform YAML definition into groovy uh, job DSL with our default job settings on Infra CI. So we need to implement the job of kind GitHub organization. So then we only have to put a Jenkins underscore update, Jenkins file underscore update CLI pipeline that will be taken for only the update CLI. We also have a slightly minor bug is that since we have two multi-branch jobs pointing to the same repo, we have some of the GitHub check by default that have the same ID. So sometimes it will direct to one or to the other, uh, generally to the last job that finished the check. We are not sure uh, how to change that. Uh, so we need help on that. Another issue. The two jobs have the same GH check status. How to change that? Did I forget something on that topic, Ravi? Okay. Uh, so I'm, I propose to remove the milestone and put it back to the infra team next, meaning we will have to work later after the DevOps world. One, two, three, let's go then, if no one objects. Okay, I think we have covered all everything there. I need to move this one. Collect data dog metric for ephemeral VMs. I don't know why it wasn't there. It was, uh, you just jumped it. I forget it, sorry. Stefan, can you give us a status on this one? Um, almost there, missing the, the Windows part for it. I think it's okay. uh, it's up. Um, 
Yeah, if I don't misunderstood, it's okay. Except that. Okay, and the public dashboard, right? Can you explain that? So the goal is to provide to the end users a dashboard with metrics about the agent. So if they have a build of their plugins or core or contribution on CI Jenkins IO, they have free access to the machine metrics to correlate with what was, did it use that amount of memory? Did it crash because of, of OM, etc. So we have oh. to give them a dashboard. So By we can, default, we can open a, a Datadog dashboard to the public or cool? Yes, absolutely. So the first step is to have a dashboard that will be private by default and add the correct filters. And once uh, we validate as a team the dashboard, then we can open it to developer and communicate to the mailing list. So developer could use that additional tool for to observe the state of the agents in their pipelines. Great. Then public. I think that was in the initial definition, but I might have. Yes, make the Datadog data available for developers. So there is no implementation path there. So the proposal is a dashboard because we use dashboard for status Jenkins IO with Olivier last year. That was working pretty well. Cool. And so Windows VMs. So great job because it was a lot, a lot of, lot of tiny minor things that took a lot of time. So great job, Stefan. Thanks for that. Thank you. I think we have covered every work in progress. Do you have new issues that we have to take in account? So first, Stefan, just can you confirm that I can move that issue for Datadog on the next milestone? Yes, yes, please. Okay, now in terms next. of milestone infra team sim next, did you have any new issues, new issue that could that we should work on in the upcoming two weeks. Nope. Okay. Um, do you have another other new topic? We have to this um, mark the status of the elections. So I confirm that I have access to the community Jenkins IO on this course uh, topic. Um, Gavin just removed his, his, himself from that area now that I've confirmed. So both Olivia and I should be the only owner of that area. I uh, saw so that has been discussed as a topic on this week uh, contributor board. Is it a topic that we should discuss during the contributor summit? That will be a good way to just pave, pave the way. So that means I will have to ask Olivier sometimes this week if he can give me some uh, uh, some notes or tips on the path in order to have this. Does it look good? We we definitely should mention it at the contributor summit. Certainly, the timeline is a bit rushed because we would like to invite people to um, submit their nominations during September. We may need to extend that into mid October. So so certainly have have the conversation with Olivier. Um, maybe it's good for you and me to sit down together and look at at what the parts and pieces are that are are there. There's announcement, et cetera. And we may be able to get those out even before Contributor Summit so that at the Contributor Summit, we're just reinforcing that, hey, this process has started. So we need to start as soon as possible. The process okay uh, major topic during the contrib as well well and, and i'm not even sure it's a major topic it will we'll no. briefly mention that elections are in process we're going to use the same same methods we used as as last year okay any question blockers Okay, so that's all for me. I don't know if you have one last word. First of all, let me stop the recording.